tuning in to another show of the Lisa Pizik show. And today I'm talking about what to say yes to and what to say no to. That yes versus no. Because there's a lot of information out there around setting boundaries and being careful with where you spend your time and who you spend your time with and staying in your zone of genius and all of these things that I have taught you on previous podcasts and live videos and blog posts. There is not a lack of information around this kind of stuff. But today I want to challenge the way you think in this podcast because what you say yes to and what you say no to, I believe changes the longer that you're in business, the more that you grow. There's that newbie and that rookie kind of mindset and space that you play in. And then there's that little bit more advanced lessons that you learn. And I think there is a huge difference between the yes versus the no, depending on where you're at in business. I just got off a phone call, so exciting, with a woman who runs a platform that educates different types of accountants and business people, and they have to do continuing education very similar to when I was a nurse. And if I wanted to keep my nursing license, I was required to get education, stay current. Same thing when I played in the health and fitness land. In order to recertify every year, I had to keep up with the changing knowledge. Now as a business strategist, there is nothing that is mandatory, but I still make sure that I am doing courses, I'm going to masterminds, I'm going to events, and I have that own internal motivation to stay current and stay relevant and stay present. But she contacted me and said, I would love for you to have your courses on our platform. I think they would be a great fit. I saw you on the Skillshare platform in which probably, when was that, six, eight, almost a year ago, Skillshare reached out to me and said, we are a service that hosts courses, saw you on YouTube, I think you'd be a great fit for our platform. Fantastic. Sometimes I get asked to be on online summits because people see me on Skillshare or YouTube or these other places that I'm showing up and that I'm relevant. If I would have talked myself out of putting myself on those platforms, doors would not continue to be opening for me. Skillshare, I make like, I don't know, 30, 40, 50 dollars a month. This new platform today that I talked to the woman, she says on average, instructors make five to 10K a month. Holy moly. Batman, talk about being well compensated for the work that you put in. But it started with skill, it started with free, actually, YouTube, free, podcast, free, then Skillshare, free for me to put stuff on there, but getting compensated for like my morning coffee. Now, playing a bigger game, bigger doors are opening. The same thing happened when I started in the speaking industry. A lot of people have asked me, how do you get paid to speak? How do you get to speak internationally? How have you been in London? How have you been in the US? How do you speak in Toronto? And I tell them I started for free. Now I know some speakers will say, don't ever do that. You are undercutting, you know, us speakers that are getting well compensated. Yeah, but then I challenge you and say, think back to where you started. My intention and my goal was just to get in front of people and start speaking and get better and practice. And that's what I did when I would call up all the local mom in business, mompreneurs, fempreneurs, anything with a preneur at the end of it and said, I think I can host a workshop, workshop, bleh, and can't speak today. And I have some value that I can give you. I 
have some teachings that I want to share around funnels and websites and Facebook lives and content, and social media. Do you think that would be a value toward your, towards your community? And they said, of course. So I started speaking for free, which a lot of times that again, then later led to just a couple of weeks ago, had a woman call me up and say, I want to book some strategy calls with you. I don't know if you remember me, but you taught me a free workshop last year. I didn't remember her, but when I saw her video, we hopped on a video call and I was like, ah, yes, now I remember you. I didn't remember from her name, but she remembered me because I said yes. And I just got out there and that return on investment paid off much, much later. So, you know, what I'm seeing in our industry now is people saying, oh, well, I'm not going to do it just starting out. I'm not going to do anything for free. I'm only going to get paid. I know my worth, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I completely agree with you about knowing your worth. But I feel like when you're a rookie and a newbie and you're just starting out, you don't have that luxury to say no. You don't have that luxury to turn things down because you just got to get out there. You got to get in the game and see that all of these efforts compound. Now, there does come a time where I'm going into my third year now of being a speaker and the freebie stuff, I don't really do anymore unless I feel hugely called to the message and the mission and the community and the group. So I allow one to two free speaking engagements now uh, throughout the year. And now I prefer to be paid to speak or I can make an offer and I know that's going to convert and I will be paid on the back end of that. I'm putting these courses on platforms where I get paid to do that as opposed to just sharing information that's a deep dive on my free accounts. So you grow into that. So in the beginning, you say yes to everything. You do. You give yourself six months to a year to say yes to everything and see what shifts and happens and changes in your life. In the beginning, you're not in a position to say no. So the way that I would say yes, the yes versus no, I want you to remember that V and that S. Yes versus no. The V is visibility. You're saying yes to anything that is making you visible where other platforms, people, things can find you. So think of the bigger game. Again, for me with Skillshare, over time, again, my courses will compound. I'm just new to that platform. So I'm only making 30, 40, 50 bucks a month. But I'm able to be visible and seen that other bigger platforms and bigger plays are finding me. And then the S is that service. It makes you visible or it's purely of service, meaning that you're doing it because you feel called to do it. You're doing it because you want to serve that community, that platform, that group, those people. Those are the two things you say yes to in the beginning. And then as you grow, you can start saying no to people and things that, that aren't in alignment with where you're going, what you're trying to create, what you're doing. And remember, a no doesn't mean, no, I can't help you. Maybe a no just means, I'm not going to give you my time right now, but you can on your own time, go and check out my YouTube video or my podcast or wherever else you want to send them. But in the beginning, yes, yes to being visible, yes to service. That's the message, the quick message that I wanted to share with you today. And I know what you're thinking. I know that you're thinking at what point do I start to say no? At the point where you feel like you've positioned yourself, where people can find you, the authority is built. You're starting to build that following. Your people are starting to know who you are and what you do. And I know you're saying to yourself, well, I don't do anything unless I get paid. You're thinking small. You may have heard me share before. It's not about that ROI, that return on investment. 
It's about the ROG, that return on gratitude, because that is going to get people coming to your online or in-person door of business, knocking it down, saying, I need you, I want you now. And then you're ready to go. Burn to Rise program is launched. I'm so excited about this. It's the 21 gaps and traps that you may be finding yourself in business. It's not about creating new. It's stuff like this, this mindset of what do I say yes to? What do I say no to? What is that? It's 21 gaps and traps. We deep dive. It's a 21 module course. Each module takes about five, 10 minutes. So if it were me doing it, I would just block out the 21 days and do it in a month. But you, it's on Kajabi. So you have full access to the course for your entire life because you may want to take your time with it. Uh, when I first did it, I ran it as, I beta tested it as a Facebook group. And I literally dropped a lesson every single day. And we got to about day 11 and people said, oh my God, this is like a fire hose of information. We want to slow down. We want to take our time with it. And they went, okay, noted. Not everybody runs at the crazy fast pace that I run out, run at. Life happens. Things happen. So now it's a 21 lesson, go at your own pace, DIY kind of course. And you go to www.burntorise.com. Promise you one of the best investments you will make in your business, especially this year, because how much longer can you get stuck? Can you keep twisting your ankle in that pothole and your mindset is wonky and you're not making the right decisions that are going to serve you over the long term? So now is the time to get in there at www.burntorise.com. As always, thank you for being here. Thank you for tuning in to the Lisa Pizik show. I truly love and honor every single listener that takes the time out of their week to dig in and get that mindset flip, make a change and go. So thanks for tuning in and I'll see you next time. I'll see you next week, hopefully on the Lisa Pizik show. Bye for now.